Hello and welcome to Beagle with Games and Box Media of the new Shadows over in the Strad Deck Builders Toolkit. My name is Simon and I'll be doing the unboxing today. So because of the way Magic's now uh, been shifted to this two set per block paradigm, we don't have core sets anymore. So it's going to be the duty of main sets like Shadows over in Strad to carry the Deck Builders Toolkit flag. So assuming you're watching this because you might be new to Magic and you're curious about this, Maybe you've been drawn towards the Deck Builders Toolkit as an idea for a starting point and this is definitely something you'll want to get if you're getting into magic and you want to start building stuff. So you get 285 cards in there and how that breaks down as it says on the back. 125 semi-randomised cards, then you get your four boosters, 100 basic lands and then like a guide and a reference card. And then of course you get the storage box as well. So what I'm going to do is just show you all those components. I'm not going to go through actual deck building. I'm going to leave that to much more knowledgeable and uh, wise people than me. Um, <laughs> but I will show you what you get in here so you get an idea of whether or not the deck builders talk it is something you're after. So we open it up and just to note this is a fantastic storage box. They're really sturdy, really decent cardboard boxes. So if you do start getting into magic and you pick up one of these, this is a great way to store your cards. So the most uh, the, you know, the most apparent thing you get in there are your boosters. So you get four boosters, you get two Shadows over Innistrad and two Battle for Zendikar. This is really good from previous um, Deck Builders toolkits, because in previous ones you used to get um, boosters from sets that are a little bit older and weren't necessarily as useful, which is a shame. So let's put those to one side though. We'll come to those shortly. So these are the four packs of cards you get in there. So this is your basic land pack. So it has pretty much all the like, basic lands from the 100 that you're going to get. And you're going to need these if you're going to do deck building. Um, when you first start out in Magic and you first start deck building, you almost have zero lands and you're scrabbling around to find them. And then when you start playing long enough, you have lands coming out of your ears. But to start with, this is spot on. So I'm not going to open that up because it's just basic lands. So in here we have another one of the packs. So let's open it and have a look, see what we get. And again, like I said, I'm not going to go through each card. I'm just going to have a look to show you an idea of what you get in here. So as you can see, we're getting several of these unknown shores. It's semi-randomized because the cards that are filling in here are random as to what you're getting but you definitely always get the unknown shores. So, there we go, so that's there, that's there. So, everything else was randomized from that. And what I'm actually gonna do, just out of interest, so what I'm gonna do is put the lands there. Uh, I'm gonna put the colorless, I know they're Eldrazi, but what I'm actually gonna do is just split these quickly up into color, and again, for those Magic purists out there, this is not in the correct, what they call Wooburg order, which is uh, white, blue, black, red, green. I'm really sorry for it not being in the perfect order. <laughs> um, and again, I'm mixing the Eldrazi with the artifacts, but it's all just for the sake of time on the video, so you're not here all day. So we'll split these into the colors. The reason I'm doing this is just so you can have an idea of roughly how much you're getting of each. It should be roughly similar. Um, of course. So, so, yeah, so these are all looking fairly similar, although the green's a little bit, green and white are probably the two thinnest on the ground so far. But, we've still got more packs to go. So let's have a look at this one. So again, you can tell from the set symbol what sets these cards are from. So you've got the set symbol here on the card. So I'll show you these two. So this is the Shadows Over Innistrad set symbol. This is the uh, Battle for Zendikar symbol. Um, sorry, Over the Gatewatch symbol. So you can see, I put the reds on the green, blacks, didn't I? Sorry. So you can see these are coming from different um, different sets. So you're getting a nice mix, a nice variety of cards. So in this one, so you get a crumbling vestige uh, there. Then you get, which is really cool, you get um, two copies of each of these dual color lands. Now these ones enter the battlefield tapped but then they can produce one of two different colors. And these are really good for building dual color decks. So you get a whole cycle in there, what they call enemy and allied pairs. 
So you get a whole cycle of these non-basics, which is fantastic. You pretty much build just about any color combination and have some nice help there. And then we also have more of the basic lands just to fill out that 100 of that sealed pack that we got earlier. And on to the last one. Now this one, just to note, has slightly different. It has this 16 symbol. So Magic, for a while, were doing um, what they called Magic, the Magic core sets, and they had M10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And now they've stopped. So what they're doing is with um, the Deck Builders Toolkit and with the sample demo decks they produce and stuff, they're putting the 16 symbol on and assuming next year they'll update them to 17 and so on and so forth. Um, they're not part of any sort of like official set, they're just these extra demo cards. And for those of you who've been playing Magic for a long time, you should recognize <laughs> Nightmare, Shivan Dragon, and even potentially Aegis, uh, Aegis Angel. Soul of the Harvest is new for the green, and then we've got Sphinx and the Magosi for blue as well. So these fives are rare, so you get one of each color, and these are preset for all the Deck Builders toolkits. In fact, this whole pack is preset for the Deck Builders toolkit. Um, and these are just some really good simple cards to get for each um, for each color. So it just really helps you set up each of those colors with one piece of each. So <laughs> Tengir Vampire, a classic black card. So there we go. And then we get some artifacts at the back as well, and we get an Evolving Worlds, which helps you search your land, uh, search your deck. For some land. So from what we've got here this is enough to start building decks. Now you're not going to be able to build competitive aggressive tier 1 tournament deck from this but you're certainly going to be able to create some interesting varieties, try out some different ideas, different concepts, um, see what sort of themes of magic you actually enjoy playing. Um, this one has crossed my mind, Wooburg is, um, as I said, was the colour order. And if you look on the back of a magic card, it's white, blue, black, red, and green. That's Wooburg with uh, artifacts coming afterwards and lands right at the end. Um, just for that, cross my mind because I never finished that same one. Um, so yeah, so you've certainly got enough here to start building decks from. But then you also have the added bonus of having some boosters to add some even more variety to it. So let's have a quick look inside here. See what we get. So the Battle for Zendikar was the previous block that came out, the one before Shadows over Innistrad. So it's nice to get these in as well because you should still be able to buy some more of these. Oh, we unfortunately have a miscut uh, boost pack here. You can see normally a card would be cut like that, but as you can see, unfortunately, this has been cut a bit badly. There's nothing wrong with that. You can still play these cards. Yes, they don't look quite as visually appealing. Some people actually prefer miscut cards. It's check a look, take a look on Facebook if you're curious for miscut cards. So there's a few in there, but it's nothing that you need to worry about. They're still perfectly fine to play in a deck. It's all just down to personal preference, whether or not you're happy with that. And we got a oh, we got a Desolation Twin. That's a nice rare to pull there. Also, Battle for Zendikar had these full art lands. This is something very unique to Zendikar. You can use these in your deck as basic lands. They're just nice, prettier, full art versions. And they don't exist outside of Battle for Zendikar or the original Zendikar set, um, or unhinged or unglued if you want to check those out. Otherwise, all lands normally are simple basics. And you also get a token in the booster as well. Not always, sometimes it's an advert card, but that's cool. We've got an Aldrazi sign token, which is one of the types of tokens that um, gets made uh, in, in the set from some of the mechanics. I'm opening the other Adrati booster. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through each individual card. I'm not going to explain sort of like how to build a deck. Um, so leave that to much. Oh, Feldar Sovereign, very nice rare. Uh, I will leave that for some more experienced people to teach. But it's just giving you an idea of what to expect from a deck builder's toolkit. So we're onto the Shadows over Innistrad, which is the most recent set as of the video and as of this toolkit coming out. 
Um, so we'll have a look and see what we get in this one. So this one has transforming cards, which we should see at least one of. So we have a Nefalia Moondrakes as our rare. We also got Hinterland Logger as our transform card. Now these ones, shunk, transform. They all have different conditions. Some of them are if no one's played a spell, others are if something dies, etc. There are different conditions and these flick over when they're played. Uh, that's the token there. However, with the transform cards, obviously the backs of them are not normal magic card backs. So they provide in the booster these. So these are double faced cards that, um, double faced proxy cards that you can use. So for, in this case, we have a Hinterland, um, Hinterland Logger. So you'd mark off Hinterland Hogger, uh, Hinterland Hogger, Hinterland Logger here on the dual face card. And then you would um, put that in your deck in place of this card if you're not using sleeves or if you're using transparent sleeves, just so you, you know, you can't see where the card is in your deck. And then uh, when you reveal or play your proxied card, you just go and grab this from the side, put it on top, nice and easy. So the double phrase proxy cards are quite useful for putting in your deck. And then we're on to the next, Shadows of the Inner Booster. Uh, just take a look through here. So there's another, just noting the things like an unruly mob, so you'd have double of those now because you get one in here. So that's cool. Um, so we have the Mind Rack Demon. So this one's a mythic rare. So you can denote the rarity by the colour in the set symbol. It's this red bronzy colour. Uh, that denotes mythic rare. Gold was a rare. Silver is uncommon and black is common. So we've got one of the mythics, which is one of the rarer cards, well, the rarest cards to find apart from a foil mythic rare uh, in a booster. So that's really nice to be able to pull a mythic rare from a uh, toolkit. So there we go. So that's all the cards you get in the box. You do also get a leaflet in here which gives you a very brief explanation on each of the colors of magic and I, and I do mean brief as um it's effectively three bullet points on each and then a little color wheel just explain the different um the different sort of principles of each color and if you are new to magic just to note that um to the left is the L, uh, ally and to the right is the enemy so that's the enemy ally cycle and then on the back it's a quick guide on how to build a deck so sort your cards find your new find your key cards explore the options focus your deck add the lands play and refine so what that means is um, sort your cards in a similar way to what I've done here. Sort them by colour. Colour is the easiest way to sort them because your deck will focus around different colours. Find your key cards. Usually you'll find like a big shiny rare that you want to pace your deck around, you know, classic angels and demons for example. You find something you want to base your deck around. You then look at the different cards you get to support this or build from it to fit the low end and the high end, you know, quick cards and late game cards. Then refine your deck down a bit, add in your lands, and just start playing it. So there's a very rough guide on how to do deck building. So there we go. So that's all the stuff that we've gotten in our toolkit here. If you're brand new to Magic, I highly, highly recommend getting a hold of one of these toolkits. It's a great way to sort of kickstart your collection. Maybe if you buy uh, an intro deck or something to go along with it, play with the intro pack then start delving into the toolkit, maybe just customize the intro deck to start with, or even try and build your own deck from scratch if you can, which would be a fantastic way to start learning. You learn a lot about the game by trying to make your own deck, because you, you sort of learn a lot of the rules and interactions, so making your own decks, always a really good exercise. So there we go. So, um, if you have any questions uh, or would like to know anything else, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Just ask away. If you want to know any more information about this toolkit or anything else, just feel free to ask or drop us a message. 
Uh, remember, every individual card you've seen here can be bought and sold on our website, bigorbitcards.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe, check out my other videos. I've also unboxed the Shadows Over Innistrad intro pack, so check those out if you're new to Magic and want to see what a good way to get into the game is. But other than that, the, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.